series is Leaders Do the Works of Jesus. That's the overall uh, series uh, that we will uh, be bringing forth by the Spirit of the Lord. And tonight, the title is, uh, what is the title? <laughs> The Does works of Jesus lead, lead to, to faith. faith. Lead to faith. And that's, if you do the works of uh, Jesus, that's why um, a leader, why you're a leader is because it's the works that lead people to faith. Amen. And uh, we're going to be looking primarily in the book of John and uh, because he has this continuing theme uh, in the book of John that the works of Jesus lead to faith. We'll start with uh, uh, John chapter 11, verse 47 and 48. And there was a council called because he had raised Lazarus from the dead and uh, the council of the high priest and the Pharisees. And uh, they said uh, that if these works continue, the works of this man, if they continue, everyone will believe. Woo! Hallelujah. What Hallelujah. a statement. The works of Jesus, if we do the works of Jesus, people will believe. Amen. And that's why they were so frightened, because they saw the power in the works. Mm. And it's the works that lead people uh, to faith. And so if you're doing the works, you're a leader then, because oh, the works uh, lead people to faith. But let's look at a couple of other um, uh, passages and uh John chapter 10, verses 7, uh, 37 and, and 38, uh, he said, uh, the, the Father is doing the works. And if you don't believe the words that I'm telling you, if you don't believe the words, then believe the works. Mm -hmm. See, if, if you look at the works, uh, then you can believe. And then there's another passage, and this is really the core uh, of the message tonight, and that is John 14. And I'm going to ask Sherry to read verses 10 and 11. We'll come back and read some others later. But we'll start with 10 and 11. And this is from the New American Standard. Verse 10. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father, as he remains in me, does his works. Verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. So what Jesus is saying here is that if you can't believe the words, look at the works that he was doing. Believe because of the works. Uh, now, if we look at the book of John, we'll see that there are eight uh, gifts of the Spirit that were in operation in, in Jesus. Uh, different examples, eight examples that come to mind quickly. First, he turned water to wine. Uh, second, mm -hmm. he had a word of knowledge for the woman at the, the well. well of Samaria. He said, uh, you have had five husbands and the man you're with is not your husband. That was a word of uh, knowledge. And then we see he healed in John chapter four. I'm just going through John looking at eight different examples of the miracles and the signs and wonders that Jesus did. And then he healed uh, the nobleman's son, John mm -hmm. chapter four. And the nobleman's son was a, a distance away. It took him a day to get there to him. And verse uh, chapter five, he healed the man who was crippled for 38 years. Uh, mm -hmm. John ch chapter six, he fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves. Uh, Jesus walked on the water. Uh, then in John 9, he healed the blind man by oh, yeah. making mud with his spit uh, out of the clay. And then in John 11, he raised Lazarus from the dead. And uh, he's calling these the works of the Father. But now Paul uh, gave us more specific, specific instruction about them in 1 Corinthians 12. And he, uh, Paul called them the works of the Holy Spirit or the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so we know that the Father was doing the works. The Father was in Jesus. The Father was doing the works. Uh, and we also know it was by his spirit, uh, through his spirit. Now, let's look at Jesus for a minute. Jesus said, the Father's doing the works. But then later he said, I'm doing the works. 
because you can do what I do. You can do this. So he's taking ownership of the works. But we know the Father did them. And we also know that the Holy Spirit did, did them. But he took ownership of them. And uh, it's the same for us. We do the works. But we know it's the Spirit of God within us. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit within us. Do it. But you have to take ownership of it. Uh, Wayne Tinch uh, pointed this out in August that we've got to take ownership of the of the miracles. We've got to take ownership of the signs and wonders. Amen. Otherwise, we're separating and saying, "Okay, somebody else is doing the work," uh, and and so I'm I'm not doing it. I, I've got to rely on somebody else. But Jesus said in in uh, Matthew ten verses seven and eight, "Preach and proclaim the kingdom." and then heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and cast out demons. Said, you do it. Mm -hmm. and, and so many times people want to say, well, I can't do that. I'm not a miracle worker, but let me tell you, you are a miracle worker because mm -hmm. you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. In you. The Father is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you, and the Holy Spirit's doing the works through you, but you take ownership. You are a miracle worker. You are a worker of the works of Jesus, just like Jesus took ownership of what the Father was doing through him. You know, the Father works through yielded vessels. Hallelujah. 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 And Hallelujah. so I'm saying that you can heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons because Jesus told you to do it. Amen. He didn't tell you to do something that you couldn't do. He told you to do what you can do, and we know it is the Holy Spirit working through you, but you need to take ownership. Otherwise, uh, it's just going to pass you by, and you think, well, I have nothing to do. But let me tell you, if you keep doing the works of Jesus, if we all keep doing the works of Jesus, everyone will believe. That's what I said, John, John chapter 11, verses 47 and 48. So we're going to be looking at these works, but there are two other verses here I want to share you to read, and this is continuing in John 14 and verses, uh, what is it, 12, 12 and 13. And 13. Mm -hmm. Truly, yeah, go ahead. truly, truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I'm going to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, this I will do so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Jesus said believers will do the works that he did. Now, what kind of works? It's the work of the Father, of course, work, or the works of the Holy Spirit, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, healing, uh, faith, a gift of faith, a gift of miracles. Uh, you know, you look at Lazarus, what, what gift did Jesus use to raise up Lazarus? It was the gift of faith. Hallelujah. To raise him up. It certainly wasn't Lazarus's faith, and it wasn't his sister's faith, uh, because they didn't have faith for it. Uh, it was Jesus operating in the gift of faith to raise up Lazarus from the dead. Mm. Now, it's really important here. You need to realize that we all can do it, because why? We're a believer. Amen. Amen. A and if you do the works, then I know you're a believer. Otherwise, you might just be a confessor. There's a lot of people out there confessing that they uh, are believe in Jesus, but the ones we know believe in Jesus are doing the works mm. in their day-by-day -day operation as they encounter people. They're giving them a word of knowledge, mm. or they're giving them a word of wisdom, or they're Mm. Are they prophesying mm. to them? Are they laying hands on the sick mm. and seeing them recover. recover? Are they casting out demons, demons. just Woo! on a day by day basis? Uh, and I just give you this example <laughs> today. Uh, uh, Sherry was watching uh, Jack here uh, on a, a on his video uh, on his live video today, and she just wrote a comment, a word of knowledge, and and someone received their healing there. They reported back they were healed. Uh, because they had received the word of not that was today that wasn't 10 years ago and it wasn't uh, uh something that somebody else did but that that's what sherry did uh, today just being sherry uh just uh, operating in the gifts that that god has given her but 
All of us uh, are to operate in this way. You know, Jesus made this incredible statement in John chapter 10, verse 37. If I don't do the works, uh, don't believe me. If I don't do the works mm -hmm, of the mm -hmm, Father, mm -hmm. don't believe me. And, and so how many people are out there are professing and confessing uh, they are believers, but they're not doing the works? Well, uh, Jesus said, don't believe them because they need to be doing the works. Woo! Hallelujah. That, that ought to touch all of us down. Right, to, right. Down, down to, to the, the core. core. Hallelujah. <laughs> down to the core. If we are believers, we will be doing the works. And uh, otherwise, I'm just a confessor if, I, if I'm not doing the works mm -hmm, of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing that Jesus said that was real important here that Sherry just read that we can ask in his name. Now, who who is it that he said can ask? whatever you want to ask in his name. He's saying those people who are doing the works. So if you're doing the works, you're going to need some support. You're going to need some help. You're going to need some resources. If you're doing the works, if you're out there doing the works, but you've got, Jesus has it covered. He said, you ask in my name, I'll do it. You just ask in my name. And who's who is he talking to? He's talking to those people who are doing the works, doing what Jesus uh, told them to do. You can ask what you want to. This is not like the other prayer uh, statements in the in the Bible that Jesus made and, and others made. Uh, they had conditions. They had different conditions. Uh, I, I mean, you in John 15, you have to abide in him. He, his word abides in you, and then you can ask. Uh, in Mark 11 to 24, uh, if you believe or whatever you, mm -hmm. whatever you ask, uh, you can have and, and John uh first John 5 14 and 15 see their conditions he said if you if we ask according to his will uh so there were conditions to be fulfilled but there were no conditions here on these in John 14 you ask in my name and I will do it Jesus said he didn't put a bunch of conditions out there and you've got to do this you've got to jump over these hoops and no or do this and do that no he just said He's talking to people who are doing his work, and he's saying, you just ask in my name, and I will do, do it. it. Oh, Amen. glory to God. He, he didn't say a, a lesser angel, a, a, some uh, angel mm. will come mm. and do it. And no, he mm. said, no, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus said, I will do it. I he, will do it. I, I'm talking to you. You're out there, believers, doing my works, and I'm talking to you. You ask what you will. And I will do it, Jesus said. Hallelujah. That, that gives Hallelujah. us a lot of confidence that's going to be done. Uh, glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. Now, there, there's another passage that goes along with this. And this is John uh, 5, verses 19 and 20. And, and he's saying uh, that the Father's doing these things. Jesus said, I can do nothing of myself. Well, that verse is very similar to what he said about you and me. In John 15, he said, we can do uh, nothing, nothing of ourselves. We, we've got to abide in, in the vine. vine. Uh, we can do nothing of ourselves. But here in John 5, 19 and 20, he said, it's the Father doing the work. I can do nothing of myself. But the Father's working these works, and he's going to do greater things than you, this, and you will be amazed. Oh, glory to God. Here, there's a word here he's using. It. It's saying, and it's translated marvelous and wonderful and amazing. And, and so these works, see, when the when the Lord is doing them through you, these are amazing things. Or they're doing uh, things around you that somebody's doing the works of Jesus. These are amazing. And then he goes on and talks about judgment. Now, why did he talk about judgment? Because when the works are being done, we are being held accountable for what we do. Are we going to believe them? Or are we going to reject them? There's works being done around mm, us all the time uh, yeah. uh, in the name of Jesus, by uh, with the works of Jesus being done by his believers. And, and it's a serious, serious thing what our response is. See, we look over here in uh, Matthew 11, verses 21 and 23. And he said, woe well, unto you, uh, Chorazin and, and uh, Bethsaida and uh, Capernaum. Woe! And, now, what he meant by that is there's judgment on you. There, there's going to be judgment on these cities. Now, I want to just think about this for a moment. A judgment on a city. Uh, 
because they didn't mm, they didn't mm, hold mm, up mm. these works of jesus he said these works have been done in you if the works the mighty works that were done in uh, Chorazin and uh, Bethsaida, if they had been done in the wicked cities of Tyre and Zidon, mm -hmm. uh, those cities would have repented. Yes. And they would be in sackcloth and ashes. And he mm -hmm. goes on down verse 23 mm -hmm. and says, Woe unto you, Capernaum. This is judgment on Capernaum. Uh, and why is that? Because uh, the mighty works that were done in you, uh, and, and you didn't, you didn't value them. You didn't think they were precious. You mm. didn't think these were amazing, wonderful, glorious, mm. uh, wonderful mm. things. No, but if these works had been done in Sodom, oh, listen oh, to me. Oh, hallelujah. If they'd been done in Sodom, Sodom would still Sodom would still be here today mm. because they would have repented. It would, they were going away. See, Sodom was going away from God. But if these mighty works had been done uh, in Sodom, then they would have repented. They would have turned back to God. They would have gone in a sackcloth and ashes and, uh, and God would not have destroyed that city. Can you imagine how important doing the works of Jesus are? That a wicked city can be won uh, by people doing the works of the city. Now, let's look at it in this respect, though. Let's say one of these cities, uh, and maybe you were in it, I, I don't know, a, a city, and maybe there was some work. But let's say one of these cities may have had 30,000 people in it. 30,000 people. Let's just say, I'm just pulling out some numbers. And, and let's say Jesus went through there and did eight, eight works, uh, like the eight that we mentioned here in John. What have you done those eight? That didn't mean that everybody in that 30,000 had received the miracle. Did you hear me? Now, not everybody of the 30,000, if there were only eight, okay? But the whole city, the whole 30,000 is going to have judgment on it. Now, what do, what do we mean by judgment? What kind of a judgment? Well, let's just look at what Jesus did. He didn't hang around the unbelievers that much. Oh, hallelujah. And, and I'm going to give you three. Uh, I'm going to give you three examples, and the third one is going to relate to unbelief. I mean, they're all three that relate to unbelievers, but the third one is going to relate to Bethsaida. See, mm -hmm. Mark mm -hmm. chapter 5, uh, Jesus went into Jairus' house to raise up his dead daughter, and there were some people there, and they were carrying on and weeping and mourning, and they said, she's dead, and Jesus said, no, she's not dead. She's, she's asleep. asleep. She's asleep. And so they ridiculed him. What did he do? He kicked them out. He, <laughs> he put them out of the house because he was going to go in there and raise them up. And so he didn't want the unbelievers around. It's important. So don't just hang around unbelievers. Amen. Don't hang around unbelievers when you're wanting to do miracles. When you're going to do the works of, of Jesus, then just kick them out separate yourself from the unbelievers see mark chapter six uh jesus was in his own hometown and there it says he could do no mighty works because of their unbelief no mighty works because of their unbelief see unbelief will keep jesus from doing mighty works it will keep you from doing mighty works i mean and mark yeah. eight's where i'm going mark eight see what is judgment on bethsaida well, there was a blind man that some people brought to Jesus in Mark 8, Bethsaida. And re remember from Matthew, he said, woe unto you. That, and in other words, this judgment on, here's the judgment that was going to happen to, to Bethsaida. Uh, they couldn't see the works of Jesus. They had rejected him first. And now he's got uh, somebody they brought to him with uh, who was blind. And what did Jesus do in Bethsaida? He took the blind man out of the city. Out of the city. Yeah, they, they couldn't see the works. They, they were mm, not privileged mm, anymore mm, to see those works. They they couldn't oh, they couldn't wow. see what Jesus was doing. Wow. He, he had to take a take that blind man mm -hmm. out of the city because there was judgment on Bethsaida and that they were not going to see the works of Jesus and they couldn't see it. Now see the judgment. It's not an earthquake. It's not a tornado. Judgment is what God brings on them, and God is good. And his goodness leads to repentance. And so he was warning those people 
uh, to repent and, and to believe the works that Jesus was doing, but they wouldn't do it. And so he had to take uh, their sick people out of the city. He couldn't heal them in mm -hmm. the city. Mm -hmm. That's a type of judgment. You probably hadn't thought about mm -hmm. that, but that was a type of judgment that, oh yeah, they may have been worshiping the Lord and, mm -hmm. and going and all, and all of their uh, high uh, raiment and going to the big services and the big uh, temples and uh, doing all of that, but they couldn't see the works because they had been rejected and they had been judged. Oh, wow, oh, wow, wow, wow. That's serious. Wow, wow. It's serious. It is serious. How are you going to respond to the works? Now, see, the reason I brought up that 30,000 and 10, maybe mm. 10 healings, 30,000 in the city, the whole cities, whole cities uh, uh, judged. Well, in your city, there's judgment on your city because there's some works being done. And, and how are you responding to the works of Jesus that are being done in your city? What are, how are you being uh, responding to mm. the works mm. around mm. you that are, that are happening. How are Hallelujah. you responding? Amen. How are you responding in this group? You know, yes. what we see Amen. and, and Amen. we'll give you opportunity to, to move in the prophetic here, to give words of wisdom, give words of knowledge. How are you receiving it? Maybe it's not even for you. Maybe it's not even for you, but maybe it's for somebody else. And they say, oh, I receive it and I receive my healing. Well, what, you, mm -hmm. what are you going to do? You say, well, that's a, that was nice, but I don't think it's serious. But See, God. God takes it serious. Takes it serious. And he's looking at everybody around. When those things happen, we need to grab hold of them and say, oh, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. That was a wonderful. It was, yes, it was marvelous. It was marvelous because we're held accountable for what's happening in our midst, regardless of where you are. It's not just here, but it's it's even anywhere. in your city. Yeah. Where, anywhere. So what's happening around you? And you might say, well, they, they were doing some works over there across the neighborhood, but I didn't go. But the whole city is being judged Hallelujah. on, on Hallelujah. how the people are responding to the works of Jesus. And the works of Jesus lead to faith. Mm. Now, what is faith? Well, Hebrews 11, chapter 1 uh, says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See, faith is the evidence of the unseen world. And so what I want to ask you today is mm, how mm. much evidence of the unseen world do you, do you carry around with you? Uh, oh, wow. Just a little bit because you heard a, a good uh, a message uh, 30 years ago. You accepted Jesus 20 years ago. You were filled with the Spirit one time. You Or, or what? I mean, this is a, you know, it says we walk by faith. We live by faith. Mm -hmm. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. And this is an ongoing process. What are you doing? How are you responding? How are you responding to the things that God is doing around you? Not just to you, but even around you. Mm -hmm. uh, glory to God. You know, if there's a, a revival going on in your city, you might want to go and, and uh, visit it. Because Hallelujah. there may be some works Hallelujah. of Jesus going on there, and your whole city is going to be judged according to what's happening there. So don't just think, oh, I, I'm just, I can stay here in my cave, uh, man cave or woman cave, and, and just uh, have myself a good time. No, uh, <laughs> glory to God. You, you've got a greater accountability on you. You've got a greater accountability on you because God has anointed you to do great and mighty miracles. If you're a believer, and I know you are, and you're leader. here, you are a believer, then you can do the works that Jesus did. He said, he that believeth on me shall do. Do. Hallelujah. Shall do. Hallelujah. It's not a, That's oh, right. oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe someday. Maybe someday. Maybe 30 years from now when I, when I get my career and when I have my money and I have my wealth and I, and I have all my children grown up, maybe then I'll do a work. But this is an ongoing process, doing the work, because you're going to run across somebody this week. You're going That's to right. run across That's somebody right. in your world That's right. this week 
that needs a word of encouragement, that mm. needs a prophecy, that yes, needs a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. Yeah. You're going to run across a people healing. Uh, that need a healing in their body, that need peace uh, to their emotions. Yeah, in their mind. In their mind. You're going to run across people day by day that need the works of Jesus in their life. And, and there's nobody else. It's you. It's you coming in contact with him. You've got that opportunity. You've got that responsibility to do the works of Jesus. And by that, you will impact their faith. You will increase their faith. And you might say, well, I can't do the works of Jesus because he was God. Well, I'm glad you're thinking in that term because I'm going to address that because <laughs> Jesus was in fact God. It says John 1.1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and then he became, uh, he was manifested in flesh, and we know him as Jesus. The Father revealed him as Christ, but we know him as Jesus, and, uh, and so it says he was God, but in uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, he said, though uh, he was equal with God. It wasn't, it wasn't anything for him to grasp at, to be equal with God. He was, he was all, he had always been God. Now, verse seven said he emptied himself. Oh, hallelujah. He hallelujah. emptied himself of his Hallelujah. Majesty. What did he empty himself of? Well, John 17, six says that he emptied himself of the glory. So he laid the glory down and that's that presence and power of the, of God. He, he laid it down. Yeah, he had it with him and all through eternity, but when he came down here on the earth, he laid it down, and there were things that he didn't know. He didn't know that when the Father's going to call us all home. He mm -hmm. doesn't know those things. He didn't, uh, but he'd been God. He'd been equal with God, but he laid it all down, and then he began doing works, but how did he do the works? Because he didn't do any works until he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, until mm -hmm. he was immersed in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit descended upon him down there as he was coming up from the Jordan River from being baptized by John the Baptist. And the, Holy, the Father spoke to him and proclaimed, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And the Holy Spirit, the heavens were opened over mm -hmm. him and the, uh, the dove came down. The Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove. And from then on, he did the mighty work. So how mm -hmm. did he do the mighty works? It was the Holy Spirit That's working your, through, through him. him. See, he said it was the Father. He said, I couldn't do it on myself. I couldn't do it. Uh, it was the Father working through me, but he was working through his Spirit. And so it's the same with you. So the reason that you can do the works of Jesus is because of the Holy Spirit living and operating through you and the gifts working through you through the Holy Spirit. And so now you can do what Jesus did. Now you can do the works of Jesus because of the Holy Spirit. He couldn't do the works without the Holy Spirit. He said it. He said, the Father, I can do nothing of myself. It is the Father. And the Father was working through the Spirit that he was baptized with, immersed uh, at the uh, River Jordan. And then he went out and started doing those works. And in three years, John put it this way, there were so many things that Jesus did that if we wrote down all of them, the world couldn't contain the books and, and the scrolls that would be written. That, in three years, yeah, three years, how, how many more years have you got in your life uh, to impact people, to, to change their faith, to, to change the direction they're going in? Yeah, can you imagine yourself in a city, a wicked city like Sodom, and you are able to make a difference whether that city is wiped off of the face of the earth mm -hmm. or whether they serve the Lord because Amen. of doing the works. Amen. You've got the Holy Amen. Spirit in you uh, that gives you the power and the direction to do the works of Jesus. And when you do the works of Jesus, it leads people to faith. You want to know how to impact people? You want to know how to leave a legacy on the earth? Do the works of Jesus. It will change their lives. It will change lives. It can change cities because you do the works of Jesus. You're well able 
to do the works of Jesus if you are a believer. Jesus didn't put a bunch of requirements there. He said, believers are going to do the works that I do. I mean, and we know he, he didn't do them. It was the Father working through him, through his spirit. And, and But Jesus took ownership of it. That's the reason you can take ownership of doing the works of Jesus, not because of your own natural abilities, not because of your flesh, but because the Holy Spirit abides in you and you carry the gifts of the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit do the works through you, glory to God, as he wills, I mean, when, when he wills. You, you know, if there is a need, and Cindy Boatwright said that if there's a need, God is willing to meet it. Hallelujah. If there's a need. And so if you pass people uh, this week, mm -hmm. if you encounter on your work, on your job, uh, in your neighborhood, mm -hmm. as you're in out your walking, family, in your family, as you're calling on the phone, if you encounter people, they're going to need something from God and it will impact their life. If they have a need, God is willing to meet it and he will use you if you are a yielded vessel, a yielded Hallelujah. vessel. It's not because of your great intellect. It's not because of your great strength. That's right. It's because of yielding yourself to the Lord, yielding yourself to the uh, Lord and doing the works of Jesus. And that will show all of us Amen. that you are a believer because he said the believers will glow these are some of Hallelujah. The, the signs and wonders the believers are going to cast out demons Amen. in the name of jesus the they're going to lay jesus. hands on the sick and see them recover they're going to do the works of jesus thank Hallelujah. you for being here <laughs> go out and do the works of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to open up the floor in just a moment because I I sense that there's a lot of uh, a lot of stirring. There's a stirring tonight uh, in in your hearts, and and uh, and I will open it up in just a moment. But I want to say to you by the Spirit of God that the time of being in the cave is over with, and God is calling you out. God is calling you out to do what he has called you to do. So the time in the cave is over with. Also, there are three people in this group uh, that I am seeing in the spirit right now. Uh, and I'm gonna call you out. One is Haley, uh, one is Olena, and, and one is Joy, uh, Joy He, and uh, from, from North Carolina. Uh, thank you, Joy. Uh, those three, and there may be others, uh, but what I have in my spirit is that you carry the, the spirit of peace with you and that people see that peace when you walk up to them. When you begin to speak to them, they see that peace coming forth. And there is so many people uh, today that are walking around that are in turmoil, that they're in chaos, they're in confusion, and they need that peace of God. And so I encourage the three of you, uh, Haley, uh, Joy, and Olena, uh, to bring forth that peace because that is one of the works of the Holy Spirit. That is uh, one of the, the, the fruit of the Spirit, uh, but it's also uh, the kingdom. Uh, we walk in the kingdom of God, and that's righteousness, uh, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Ghost. And so you're doing kingdom work when you bring that peace uh, that you just, you, it just comes out of you. You don't have to do anything about it. It's there. And so I encourage you to, to do that. Also, I speak encouragement uh, to those of you that uh, there have been projects that you've been working on. There's been um, things that you've been trying to get accomplished uh, for the Lord and, and the Lord would say unto you that he sees what you've been doing and that he is encouraging you tonight not to give up and not to go back, but to continue forward in doing that work because he's, he's the provider. He's the one that will bring the resources. He's the one uh, that will open up the door unto you and then you can walk on through and do what he has called you to do. 
So do not give up. Do not faint. Do not uh, hold back, uh, but go forward uh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now, I know there's some other prophetic words that are stirring in, in some of you. Uh, and so I'm going to uh, open up the floor right now. Uh, but I just, uh, I thank the Lord for tonight. I thank the Lord for this series because I don't know about, about you, but we've been stirred up and we've just been, you know, excited uh, about what God wants to do with his body and his church and, uh, and that we're moving forward. And remember 2022, God makes all things new in 2022. Hallelujah. And I believe that that is a newness in your life. I believe that that's newness uh, in, in your body. I believe that that's newness uh, in what you operate in and through uh, for, for the body of Christ. Yeah, Hallelujah. Newness of purpose. Uh, hallelujah. Newness of purpose. Um, newness of vision. Woo. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I see expansion in 2022. I see the, the church uh, coming forth uh, with, with praise, with worship. Uh, I see uh, the, the body coming forth uh, in Tekoa. I see the body coming forth in, in, in all the areas that y'all are from, in Florida, in North Carolina, in Texas, hallelujah, in Albuquerque. Uh, I just see in Savannah. Uh, praise the name of Jesus in Big Spring, Texas, Bobby. Hallelujah. Uh, so I just, I see uh, the Lord just beginning to move and manifest himself through his leaders, through his leaders. These are people that, that have shown themselves faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. These are people that have said, I lay down everything I surrender everything, and I'm going to go forward with the Lord. I have decided to follow Jesus. Whether anybody else goes with me, I have decided to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, one thing Brother Fred did not say uh, uh, in this session tonight was that you need to stay with believers. You need to fellowship with believers. You need to be around people that believe in miracles. Hallelujah. That have seen miracles. That have evidence of miracles. You need to stay with those people. Because we, Brother Fred had a, a very good friend that he worked with. Uh, they, we were all uh, brought up in, in the same denomination. Um, and, and, and there was um, trouble or issues that came up uh with with this man and his family and also in in our in our family uh, there were crisis situation and we all um we we came out from the unbelievers we separated ourselves from the unbelievers and we went where they believed in miracles and where we saw miracles and we saw healings but this man even though he came and visited same place. the same place where we were going and he got so excited when he saw a miracle and he saw a healing or he saw someone slain in the spirit, but he never separated himself from the unbelievers. And that was the reason he died. And he died. We received our miracle because we had separated out from all the unbelievers and we gathered with the believers. We received ours, and he continued to have two, uh, one foot in uh, the unbelievers, uh, around unbelievers, and one foot around the miracle workers, and it didn't work. You've got to separate yourself from the unbelievers. Amen. Amen. And go forward. So I open 